Good morning. I want you to understand for the beginning part of my life, thank you. I wanted to be normal. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a little bit weird. I'm not supposed to laugh. But when I was younger, I really wanted to be normal, but I wasn't. I tried my hardest. I'm going to share a story with you, mostly because I want you to feel sorry for me. But when I was younger, what I wanted more than anything was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shirt. That's not a bad thing to want, right? But my parents decided that they couldn't afford a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle shirt. So my mom decided she was going to make me one. So she went to Walmart, and she bought me a sweatshirt with the nice cuffed wrist, and she bought me some sweat pants. And then she went to the craft section, and she found some amazing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fabric. And she cut the fabric out, and she glued it to the sweatshirt. Now, you're probably thinking that my mother cut a nice square out and put it on there to make it look nice. No. Where the turtle had his arms out, she cut around his arm. And then she glued it to the sweatshirt. And if if that wasn't bad enough, to hide the seam, she decided that she was going to get glitter paint. to put on the edges of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Now, I'm not quite sure how often I got made fun of, but it was quite often. And you just have this picture in your head, but let me show you. It kind of looked like this. I got it right here, ready? Imagine why I got made fun of. (laughs) Now, the thing that you need to understand as well is that I had matching sweatpants. (laughs) I'm not taking my pants off. (laughs) But I was a little strange. And then there was the time that Terminator 2 was coming out, and for some reason I had this really brilliant idea that I was going to get T2 shaved into the side of my head. Yep, I did that. No one had sense enough to stop me. I've always been a little weird. And when I got to college and I met Jennifer, the, the, the guys in the dorm thought I was really weird. Jennifer and I met in December. We were engaged by March, and we were married in August. And people thought I was crazy. Like, Bowman, you're, you're, you're doing something crazy, man. I think it's worked out pretty well. I think it's worked out pretty well. Tomorrow, we will be married 13 years. I remember that. You can cheer me because I remember. I think it's somebody else's anniversary tomorrow as well, right? Let me say who it is. Am I allowed to say that? Sean and Martha's anniversary tomorrow. You can clap for them too. But people have always thought I was weird. I'm okay with it now. It doesn't bother me as bad as it used to. But many of us know people who are weird in a bad way. Don't point fingers. It's not nice. But some of us know people that are weird in a good way. But what we're going to start talking about is people that are weird in a God way. And I just want you to listen to the words of Jesus. It says this, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. 
And here's where a lot of us get it messed up. Because we look around the world and we see people that aren't much different than us. Oh, I'm, I'm not much different than they are. I'm not, I'm not so bad. Everybody does the same thing. We're all kind of on the same page. We're not doing anything too different. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. So if you look at yourself and you see yourself as normal, it might be that you're living on the broad road. It might be that you're living on the broad road with everyone else, that you're just a little bit too normal. What fun is that anyway? But if we're living on the narrow road, people will take notice. People will see that there's something different about us, that we are weird. See, the idea that we're coming from this, this next few weeks is I want you to realize is that normal isn't working. What the world calls normal, it's just not working anymore. So what is normal? Well, in the world that we live in, when it comes to our finances, what normal is, is being broke. Living beyond our means. Having more debt than you could possibly ever imagine. That's what normal is. Normal is being overwhelmed, being constantly rushed, being constantly stressed out. In our professional life, what's normal anymore is just living without direction. You go to work, you work for a place, you don't really want to do anything there, it's just a paycheck and you just show up. As far as relationships go, what's normal in our world is partner after partner after partner, guilt, shame, regret, and that's what's become normal. But if you want what normal people have, then you just do what normal people do. But if you want what few people have, you've got to do what few people do. Really what you've got to do is you've got to get weird. If you want something better, if you really believe that there's something better than a normal life, And you can't do what everyone else is doing. You have to live your life in a completely different, weird way. You're going to have to leave the broad road and begin to walk the narrow road. And you will have peace. You will have joy. You will have fulfillment. But in order for us to have what few people have, We have to do what few people do. And this really isn't that foreign of a concept. If you look at the Bible, the Bible teaches us some really, really weird stuff. Like when Jesus came, he taught some really weird stuff. Like the Bible, when we looked at it, it says don't commit adultery. But Jesus said, oh yeah, well, if you even look at a woman with lust in your eyes, you've committed adultery. Man, that's weird. That's pretty hardcore. That's a little bit different than what they were teaching before. And then Jesus said things like the first will be last and the last will be first. And that's weird. Jesus said it is better to, be, to give than to have something given to you. When normal says, well, you just take it. Jesus taught us if someone hits you to turn the other cheek. That's weird, man. Jesus said, if you want to find your life, you have to lose it. He said, if someone wrongs you, you have to forgive them 70 times 7. These are really weird things. This isn't really what we do in our lives. This isn't what culture teaches us to do. This is weird. And the teachings of Scripture lead us off the broad path onto a very different path. But if we want what many people have, then we just got to keep doing the same things that other people do. We can keep living a normal life. But if we want a different life, if we want a more fulfilled life, we're going to have to leave the broad road and get on the narrow road to a road that Jesus has called us to. 
See, Jennifer and I committed when we got married in such a short amount of time that we were just going to follow Jesus. Wherever that meant, whatever he wanted us to do, we were just going to follow him. And that put us up in the little town of Williamstown. And it's been an amazing ride. I just want to give you two simple thoughts that we can build on when it comes to being weird. And the first thing is this. If you want to be weird, you can't think like normal people think. You can't think like normal people think. See, when you see someone and they have a life that you want, what you typically want to do is you want to start living the exact same life, doing the exact same things, making sure you put your life in the exact same way that they do. But then all of a sudden, you just become a photocopy of them, and then you're no longer weird. And this happens in the church world all the time. Pastors will go and they'll see a mega church that is flourishing. They'll see churches that are growing. And they say, I'm going to do the exact same thing. But that's not what we should be doing. That's not what's healthy. See, if you want to have the life that they have, you start to think like those people think. You start to figure out the reasoning behind what they're doing, why they are doing it, why are they making the decisions that they are, why are they putting themselves in that place. Figure out the why. And you begin to think like they think. Don't do what they do, but you think like they think. And the Bible says this in Romans 12, too. It says, don't live any longer the way this world lives. Let your way of thinking be completely changed. Then you'll be able to test what God wants for you. Not what the crowd, not what everyone else wants for you. And you will agree that he wants what is right. And I love the way it says this in the message. It says, don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Don't you agree that most of us live our lives and we just keep moving forward without even thinking? It says, instead, fix your attention on God and we'll be changed from the inside out. We've got to change the way that we're thinking. And really, this whole series comes from the book Weird by Craig Rochelle that I read many years ago. And Weird teaches us to think different about our time, about our money, about relationships, about sex, about values. But but why is being weird so different? Why is what we think so different? Why is it so important? Because what we think determines what we become. What we think determines what we become. That is why I think it is so detrimental to so many relationships what you're thinking about that person that you're in a relationship with. I'm not just talking about the marriage relationship or a dating relationship. I'm talking about in friendships. When you begin to think horrible things about people, it starts to change your heart and the way that you see them. When you start to think that they're the worst person, when they never do anything right, they never fulfill your needs, and you start to think this over and over and over again, it changes the way that you view this person. It changes the way that you interact. That's why the Bible tells us that we have to hold every thought captive. See, when it comes to our time, normal says this. Normal says, man, I can do this. Somebody asks you to do something and you just say yes because you don't want to say no to anyone because that would be rude. So you just say yes. I'll do it. I'm there. Whatever, Whatever you need me to do, I'm there. Normal says yes to everything. I've got enough time. I'll figure it out. I can do all the things that I need to do. But when you start to get weird, you start to say no. You start to say, you know what? I'm going to be able to say no to good things so I can say yes to great things. So there's so many of us that we miss out on so much amazing opportunities that God is trying to give you that he wants you to do because you have filled your schedule with just some good things. So you miss out on the opportunities for the great things that God wants you to have. We have to come to this place when it comes to our time that we say, you know what, I don't have time for that.
And the way that we think is so, so important when it comes to our finances. Because look, being broke is normal. And most broke people think day to day, well, how am I going to get through this day? Or they think week to week or month to month. But if you look at most wealthy people, they're going to be thinking year to year. Generation to generation. They're thinking at a larger scale. If you want what weird people have, you have to learn how weird people think. You've got to get into their minds and realize how they're thinking because I will guarantee you they aren't thinking the same way that broke people are. They learn how to deal with money in a different way. And when we start talking about dating, what's normal when it comes to dating is sending your 15-year-old daughter alone with an 18-year-old boy. Who has one thing on his mind and hoping for the absolute best. Let's get even more uncomfortable. Normal is living with someone before you're married and doing the things that married people do and pretending to be married without the holy covenant of marriage. And then when things get really tough, you pretend to get a divorce. And you move on about your merry way. See what I did there? Your merry way? No. So it's no wonder that when people do get married that you just live the life that you practiced. We've set ourselves up for it. Everybody gets divorced. Let's get divorced. And don't get me wrong. There are times when people should get divorced. We've talked about this. I'm not saying that if you've been divorced, you're a horrible person. What I'm saying is that what's normal is just giving up. What's normal is not fighting for your marriage. Fighting for your marriage, man, that's weird. So if you want what normal people have, then you have to do what normal people do. And if you want to be different, you're going to have to be different. And the second thought is this. Weird people don't live like normal people live. Weird people don't live like normal people live. And when you take Scripture seriously and you pursue God, you will be different from this world, I promise you. If you're being honest, the more that you pursue Christ, the weirder you're going to become. The closer your relationship gets with Jesus, the more that you try to be like Jesus, the more weird you're going to be to this world. And if we're living just like everyone else, the truth may be that we're not living like the Bible called us to live. Because the Bible and Jesus call us to live in a completely different way. When we meet Jesus, our objects, our wills, our desires, everything changes. 1 Peter 2, 11 and 12 says this, Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. He's basically saying if this world is your home, then just live however you want. Like, if this is your home, if this world is your home, then you can just live however you want. But this world isn't your home. So live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. He's saying, hey, man. If you want to be different than everybody else, make sure that you're living in such a way that even the people that that don't know Jesus, even though they're going to accuse you of living this really weird life, they're going to say that you're doing the wrong thing. Make sure that what you're doing glorifies God. I think for so long, there are so many of us as Christians who have been so afraid of what the world will say to us when we step outside of the norm. 
Man, what are people going to say if, if when I go to work, I just start talking about Jesus? And I share my faith, and I talk about how Jesus has changed my life, how he's changed me, how he's molded me, how he loves me. What's going to be different? What do people think? So we become quiet. We start living like everyone else. This weekend with your teenagers, we were encouraging them. Hey, look, everything that God does to you this weekend, we want it to be infectious. We want you to get really close to God, and we want the Holy Spirit to pour into your life, and we want it to go out everywhere that you go. Everywhere you go, we want the Holy Spirit to drip out of you for people to look at you and realize something is different. I'm going to tell you, those teenagers, they had this deep, deep connection with God. And for so many of us, we think that that's such a hard thing to do. Man, we're getting really close to God. That's really hard. I don't know how I'm ever going to do it. i got to do some really crazy stuff. Look, we're in a really small room. We had a television. We had some music. worship God and we studied scripture and we delve closer to him but for some reason we've got this idea that getting close to God and allowing the Holy Spirit to do something in our lives takes some type of dramatic thing to happen when all it really takes is us seeking after him earnestly That's what's weird. And all weekend long, these teenagers were doing that. See, when we seek the God of the Bible, he will lead us down a different path in life. I think of a man in Indiana when I was there. His life was pretty messed up. And his mom, he was in his 40s, and his mom kept begging him, pleading with him. You got to come to church. Come to church with me. 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 See, she never gave up. That's weird. Never giving up on people's weird. What's normal is inviting somebody one or two times and thinking that you've done your job. But she never gave up. And he came to church, and he met Jesus, and he got baptized. And then he invited the woman that he was living with. And she came to church, and she got saved too. And then they just decided they couldn't live together anymore, and it was an amazing thing. It's weird, though. I think of the woman who came to our church and she got close to Jesus. And she said that all she knew is that Jesus was drawing her closer. So she began to seek after him like she never had in her life. She said, you know what, I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to search after you and the things that you're offering me more than the things of this world. And she has a miraculous testimony. Of how after she deepened her relationship with Jesus, after how she surrendered control to Jesus, all of her anxiety medication is now gone. Because she finally gave away the keys. And for some of us, we'll have to use those medicines forever, and that's okay. But it's an amazing story of what happens when we get weird. <clears throat> I think of our friends, the Lamberts, that came not, not too long ago. He decided they would follow God wherever he called them to go. And now they live in the Holy Land. That's weird. It's a weird life to give up everything that you have in search of what God has. 
And that doesn't mean that everyone in this room is going to be called to be a missionary to some place. I hope if God calls me to be a missionary somewhere, it's some place like Hawaii where it's beautiful. I need missionaries there too, I'm guessing. But that's not what he's going to call every one of us to. But no matter what it is that he's called you to, the weird thing to do is to actually follow in his calling. To actually chase after him and do what he's called you to do. That's weird. But let me warn you. You can't copy someone else's weird. Like, you can't say, man, Adam's really weird. He's got that Ninja Turtle shirt on. You can't, like, go home and make a Ninja Turtle shirt and be weird like me because then we're just normal. I know you're going to do that. But if everybody's weird in the same way, then all of a sudden we just become this really weird cookie cutter normal that doesn't make any sense. And there's no such thing as a cookie cutter weird. I've got great news. God has a custom weird for each and every one of you. We can all be weird in our own unique way. And it's a glorious thing when God's weird people come together. And for you, being weird, living different than the world, might mean this. It might mean that you live on less so that you can give more. Or maybe it means for you freeing up some of your time so you can go and serve somewhere. For some of you, maybe it means you leave your job and you decide to stay home with your kids. Or maybe for some of you, God's been calling you into ministry and you just don't even know how that can happen because you've got to pay the bills. For some of you, that might mean leaving your job and going into ministry. For some of you, your kind of weird might be not watching TV or not listening to certain music. For some of you, your weird might be deciding you're not going to kiss someone until you're married. For some of you, you're going to decide that your weird is saving up money so that you can go to Haiti. For some of you, you're going to say, well, maybe my weird is saving up some money so I can send someone because I'm not going. But we've got to get to this place in our Christian walk where we're sick of normal. Where we're sick of living like over everyone else. Where we're sick of being overwhelmed. Where we're sick of being broke. Where we're sick of being miserable. We should be sick of normal Christianity. The type of Christianity that doesn't cost us anything. Grace is free, but following Jesus comes at a price. We can go to church and it doesn't cost us anything. Going to church, we can often go to church and not have any type of relationship with Jesus. Nothing ever changes. And as I'm here, I'll just say the same thing that I told our teenagers the other night. Every time that you come to church, every time that you go to a Bible study, you should go expecting something to change. You should go expecting something in your life to change the moment that you walk out the door. Expecting God to teach you something. Expecting God to do something in your life that when you walk out the door, you're not the same anymore. Otherwise, why are we here? If we're not coming expecting God to change something in our lives, we're just coming trying to do our weekly service, making sure we're putting in our time, saying, hey, I got this down this week. But it's more than that. If that's all it is, nothing will ever change. We risk nothing. We sacrifice nothing. When I read scripture, Jesus says, if you want to find your life, you got to lose it. But 
we want a safe church. We want a safe life. We just want to make sure that we die and we go to heaven. See, we worship at church one day a week. There's nothing weird about that. Coming in, the worship team's ready to go. They've got music picked out. Man, I can worship one day a week. I got that 30 minutes covered. That's normal. But having a a worship way of life, man, that's weird. Worshiping God in the hard times. Worshiping God when you really just don't feel like it? And that's weird. That's weird in a, in, a, in a God way. If the worship team would come. And you might be weird like me. You know, what's really weird is that I was in church my entire life. And I never realized that you could have a relationship with Jesus. Like, I was in church as long as I can remember, and I went to church, and I was there anytime the doors were open. We kind of went to church, and that was just what we did. I knew about Jesus, and I knew about the things that he did, and I knew about his miracles and how great of a man he was, and I knew all that stuff. But it wasn't until later that I realized you can have a real relationship with, with Jesus. And it changed everything. When you realize that Jesus isn't just this person that's sitting far away, waiting to strike you down the moment that you do anything wrong and waiting to give you a gold star every time you think you've done something good, but you realize that you can be in a relationship with Jesus, everything changes. I'm convinced that in America there are tons of people just like I was. I think it stems from the fact that most of us, we've never had to make our faith our own. We've just been living our parents' faith or our grandparents' faith who came and they set us on the pew and they said, this is what you do. We've never had a point where we said, hey, that Jesus, he's mine. And I want him more than anything in this life. And I want you to know when you make that decision, that's weird. When you say, I want nothing more than Jesus. The things of this world, they don't matter much, but Jesus is my everything. That's a weird thing to do. And in a small room over there where kids are now, all weekend long, we led teenagers into making that decision. to saying, you know what, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, no matter what the enemy has said about my life and what it was, I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus above everything else. That's weird. And there's some of you here this morning, I know that you've been in church your entire life. You've said a prayer and you've been baptized, but you're still living out your parents or your grandparents' faith. You've never saw Jesus for who he really is, and you've never held on to him and said, you know what? You're greater than everything. And that's a weird thing to do. Hey, teenagers, if you were here with us at God Encounter this weekend, will you come here and stand with me?
Something else that's really weird is I asked people to come forward and the teenagers just came like that. this morning in this church there are people that are sick in this church there are some of you here this morning that you're starting to realize that you've just been living out your parents faith and you've never made it your own that's not something to be embarrassed by and here in a moment I'm going to ask you to get a little weird I'm going to ask you to come forward. And then I'm going to make these guys pray for you. These guys have been here all weekend. They've been digging into Jesus, seeking his heart. There's no one better in this church right now to pray for you than these guys. Now I'm asking you to get uncomfortable. I'm asking you to get a little bit weird this morning. But you don't want to let your kids be closer to God than you, do you? So I'm going to pray in this morning, if you need a touch from God, if you need him to touch your finances, if you need him to touch your body, if you need him to touch your marriage, if you need to say, you know what, I'm going to give you everything I have. These guys are going to pray for it. And they're all really nervous about it because I never told them. So let's pray. And then they're going to play. And then you move as the Spirit moves you. Father, we thank you for today. Father, we thank you that you move in our lives, that we can still hear you. And Father, I pray for those of us here this morning that need a touch from you that we're sick, our bodies need you to touch them. And Father, I pray right now as the enemy says, hey, you don't need to step out. People can come pray for you. And that's good and it's well, but Father, I pray you give them the power that it takes to be just a little bit weird and walk forward to have people pray. And Father, I pray for those people that are in this room right now that were like I was, that are just living out their parents' faith or their grandparents' faith. Pray that this would be the morning that they make it their own. That this would be the morning they say, Jesus, you're greater than anything this world has to offer. And I want you more than anything else. And they come and they embrace you and they lay down everything at the altar this morning.